There we are. We are live. Another edition of Tiger Bait Live right here on a Tuesday night. We want to avoid LSU baseball. Uh, not sure what time that one will finally get uh, first pitch thrown out tomorrow night at the SEC tournament. But uh, LSU, after a, an incredible weekend in Nashville, wins three straight, gets a bye and a four seed. And so we're going to see how LSU uh, gets uh, started uh, in the SEC tournament. I see Fred Wright already in the chat saying, with a real LSU baseball team step up? We had a domino fall in LSU quarterback recruiting this morning is Eli Holstein of Zachary commits to Alabama. And so there's going to be a lot more that happens in the next uh, less than 30 days. I think uh, by the end of June, I think the national quarterback pitcher uh, is going to come a lot more in a focus um, as there's going to be other quarterbacks that drop. A lot of these guys like to make their decisions uh, before the start of their senior year. So... Um, We've got uh, that and a lot more to talk about on, on TigerBait.com. We're we'll going to get to all your questions and comments. And, of course, we couldn't do it w without Pride Roofing, the official roofing company of TigerBait.com that sponsors this show each and every week. And I recommend my trusty sidekick, Buddy Sanji, who's uh, with us uh, as usual on a Tuesday night. He, yeah, I, as soon as he walked in the door, the weather came down real bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of rain, a lot of showers, and uh, patience pills for uh, – all of you Tiger fans waiting to see LSU baseball play, which actually is a good thing, seeing that Kay Doty and Jacob Berry are trying to heal up. But, uh, yeah, happy Tuesday to everybody. Look, I called Mike up. I said, listen, uh, LSU is expected to play about 8 or, or 8.30 or 9 originally. What's the over and under on when the first pitch actually is thrown out? Uh, Thursday morning right now. Yeah, because it's like, what, what, what is the, the running joke on that 8 p.m. first day game? Yeah. And her, Vincent, I've been watching his posts all day. Yeah, yeah. He's in a panic mode right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, look, uh, you're going to have to wait. But, uh, hey, it's been a good uh, week or so, and you mentioned all those topics about Holstein. Look, I, I, I never really thought that, that he was going to consider LSU simply because of Walker Howard. He left uh, St. Thomas More to, to do the right thing and start over here at Zachary. And, and, and had a nice high school career, and you've seen him. You've yeah, because he, he, he will he's have started for four years. He's an excellent LSU potential quarterback, but not this particular year because Walker Howard three and, years. And, yeah. and, and Garrett Nussmeyer are right there as freshmen and a, a redshirt freshmen. So uh, he goes to Bama, and you've been telling me on the show he's been wearing Bama clothes at school for the last two or three weeks, so that's not a forgiven. Uh, Archie's going to make a decision – uh, whether it be uh, Georgia or Texas or somebody of that nature. And uh, as we know, Addison, that wide receiver who was the Bolitnikoff winner uh, last year with Pitt, ended up going to USC with a cool one-year NIL deal for $3 million. So Caleb Williams got $2 million. So Lane Kiffin uh, is making all these jokes about look at all these, these guys buying. Of course, he's poking it that uh, – uh, the guy who used to be at uh, Oklahoma and who you and I thought were going to be at LSU, Lincoln Riley. Well, you know what? i got to say it. Lincoln Riley made the right decision. He's getting everything he possibly oh, wants. No doubt. From L.A. and USC and that conference. That all being said, Mike, how about this for apples? Bet online and other sites, LSU with a six-and-a-half point win, loss, as uh, Did you see Brian Kelly's comment about that? I, I did hear a little bit of that. I didn't see the whole interview. Yeah, Jacques Doucet. Jacques, Jacques uh, got him for a good, I think, 45 minutes a day. And Jacques already put out a couple of uh, nice clips. And one of them was that. And Kelly laughing about, well, you know, that's why they make all those fancy buildings in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. And uh, But uh, he's got a good sense of humor about it. You know, but he, you know, he says we didn't come down here to win six games. But I like it because – as I often give the analogy, do you know how many trillions, I'm not even talking millions, trillions of Louisiana dollars we have spent in the state of Florida on those beaches? That's where we go, right? Doesn't matter if Panama City, Destin, Fort Walton, uh, Orange Beach, uh, Perdido, whatever. And I always talk about this, is that you get out there and you see all these SEC fan bases, Mike, and they all have their music, and, of course, LSU's always represented in the loudest and the best food and all that. But, man, after they swept Vandy and the way they're playing now, uh, you're not going to have that many people kicking up sand on that purple and gold. Well, you're, this you're, summer. you're talking about uh, Destin and, and summer meetings and 
That's coming around next week. I mean, what, what, what does uh, Sankey do? Uh, you know, that was one thing we didn't, you know, because when that happened, uh, the first salvo was that night while we were live, right? Wednesday night and Thursday morning, Jimbo addressed it. And, um, and, I, and I said, man, we probably should have had a, we should have come together and done an afternoon show or, or done something to talk about it because everybody got in on the Jimbo, Nick Saban talk, but us last week. And, um, but what does Sankey do preemptively? Does he get those guys to fly in a day early? Uh, does he has a, does he have a, a early meeting with them? Um, I mean, or does he just hope they all come in a room together and those two behave themselves? I mean, are they adjusting the seating chart right now? I mean, uh, how big is that meeting room? You know, how many square feet? How close they? What's the proximity for where they sit? You know, then they have cocktail hour and dinners together. I mean, uh, it's going to be very interesting because. Uh, when Jimbo says, I'm done with that guy, or however he phrased it, uh, I, I, he, he absolutely is. I, I don't see where there's any coming back from it other than maybe getting yourselves to the point where you can actually shake hands before and after a football game. And, and I, got a, I got a little bit of a different take on this thing as I have watched and, and analyzed this thing after a couple of days of it happening. And it is all good for LSU, and I'm going to get into that in the show today. But let me tell you what my quick impression after thinking about this is that Nick's slipping a little bit. Now, he's getting 70, and Father Time catches up with all of us, and it'll take me down, uh, only God knows how long. It'll take you down at some point. You just get to the point where you're not as sharp and you're not as quick. And I started to see a little bit of it on the sidelines. But, you know, that dam That damaged him last week. That, that damaged him, but listen – he, he got beat by Jimbo for the first time for the uh, assistant, and then he got beat by the second assistant in the championship game by Kirby. Uh, as we know, and I brought this out, the irony of all ironies, at that press conference on Saturday before the Monday championship game, Jim, uh, Jimbo was brought up indirectly by both of them because they both were saying, we've got to put a lid on this NIL. It's getting out of control. Yeah. And then guess what happens? Then the big fire and the bomb and the Scud missile that Saban – but the fact that Nick Saban personally called Jimbo Fisher out, that guy's too smart to do that. He's slipping a little bit. Uh, I, I know we all get the screaming red ass. Can I say that? I hope so. But, no, he should have known better. Okay, to, this, this, is, this is a deal. And if you don't – and I'm trying – what was the kid from Texas, one of them first two or three years of signing classes, the linebacker south of Houston, that they, was it Archie McDaniel? Remember how, uh, on signing day he was fierce because he lost the linebacker oh, yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry. Look, you, uh, I, I'm, look, I remember a lot of stuff, but that one I forget. Yeah, but I the, know no, you're talking that was about. one of the few rec- – and, and, but th- what, ha- what he did last week was like 18 of those. Because how many of those five stars that AM got were guys that he wanted? There were a lot of them. But, but my point is, is that in, in this world of cancel culture, social media, we blow up everything and analyze it and spit it out, and everybody's got so many different opinions, and depending on your generation and, and, and how you're, you're wired. Uh, that was not a good thing. The smarter Nick five years ago would have said, well, you know, there was a guy that was lucky enough to beat me last year that did all these things, and then I – he basically called Jimbo out, and even Marcus Spears, who's always been a Nick Saban proponent, uh, couldn't defend. Uh, it was Archie McDaniel. Archie McDaniel. Okay, there you go. Good I got job. you on one. Good job. All right, I like it. Yeah, well, no, the, but the other thing too, Mike, that Nick said a couple weeks ago – that people, and this is why I'm, 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 look, I had a great relationship with Coach Saban when he's here. We had a lot of fun. This was before he blew up. Now, you know, you can't talk to the guy. He's got seven rings. But lo and behold, man, to come in and he's talking about all these things with the, with the SEC and, and, you know, throwing up and almost not taking a job. And now to see where he was there when he came here, when we first saw him at Michigan State. I mean, to see how far he's going. But guess what he says last week? After he buys four guys in the in the transfer portal, Gibbs from Georgia Tech, the wide receiver from he says, "Well, I, I want us to have more parity in college football." After he just bought four or five more transfer guys 
and outbid everybody to get him, and he loses one little recruiting pole to Jimbo, and he's personally taken it. You can't be that sensitive. Nick is getting tender and sensitive, and I think he is, uh, he is going to um, certainly get criticized in the long run for what happened. All right, guys, do me a favor. If you're enjoying the show, please like, uh, hit the like button. It really helps us with the algorithm. It, uh, what it does really, especially on YouTube, it makes it show that we show up in the recommended videos when someone's watching LSU sports-related content. They'll usually, uh, if, 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 if our content's getting a lot of lights, they, they'll spread it around so it gets recommended. Very much appreciative when y'all do that if you're enjoying the show. And as always, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Loads of recruiting updates on TigerBait.com. And I got two or three more coming tomorrow, including a big-time quarterback that got an LSU offer. And I've got loads of stuff on that. You're going to want to read that tomorrow. So lots coming your way. Uh, with, along with uh, Brian Lazar just sent me a baseball column. So go to TigerBait.com, subscribe, choose the annual package. Uh, if you saw our content item with this show uh, embedded, there's a link to go straight to getting a, an annual subscription. We want to have you as a part of our Tiger Bay community. Camp's kicking the gear next month. We're going to be out there at all that stuff, giving you all the coverage. And, uh, of course, nobody does video better than we do. And so we're just we're, – I mean, how many days? We're less than 100 days now. Oh, yeah, it, it's getting here. And, and look, uh, let's give a shout-out to Preston because he's been knocking out some uh, recruiting stories. Yep. But, look, back to that question you asked me. I'm sorry to get on that long-winded answer about Saban and all because I'm passionate about that because I think what happened – is going to push him to the retirement line a little quicker. Then you compound the fact that LSU now gets extra scholarships for two years, unlimited to get to 85. You've got LSU moving up quick like this, and, and uh, it's, it's a good time for, to be a Tiger uh, if you believe in Brian Kelly, and I think most of us right now in Baton Rouge do, Mike. Let's get to some uh, questions and comments real quick. Um, Preston Guy uh, is in the chat. I see him. Normal guy says, uh, Ricky Collins, LSU maybe. And let me tell you something. That is, I'm starting to, to just, logic tells me Ricky Collins is one, you know, look, I've been talking about Ricky. I was the first guy to talk and write about him two years ago. Committed to Purdue. Uh, it's my understanding Ohio State was there on Friday. So you're looking at those dominoes we're talking about. There's only so many of those guys. You know, how many guys are actually the elite, the guys that, that college coaches, after they've done with the spring evaluation period, actually believe are the can't-miss quarterbacks? Is there maybe four in reality? Is there five? Okay, well, one by one, those guys are going to be gone. Every coach in America in Power Five wants an elite one signee quarterback in this class. Okay, well, all right, so Holstein's gone. Arch Manning, is it down to two? George and Texas. Probably. And, and I, I'm not even saying that Arch belongs in that top five, but he's the name and everybody's talking about him. All right. So then from there, um, Dante Moore. Dante Moore, who, you know, is he the number one guy on LSU's LSU, board? Notre Dame. Or is it Jaden Rashad, Rashada? Um, if you poll regional and national analysts on those two guys, they're going to say Rashada to Oregon and Dante Moore to Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame thinks LSU is a, is a big concern. But then there's also some people that think LSU is, is really in the back door with Rashada, and it ain't necessarily as clear-cut to Oregon. And neither one of them, ha or nobody, has seen the LSU offense yet, so that's another thing. You mentioned Ricky Collins? Yeah, but Rashada announces on June 18th. Oh, goodness. So I thought one of them. I thought neither one of them are going to wait to see how the offense looks. In the, in the no, these, these kids are making decisions. Okay. So Dante Moore too. Well, Dante Moore is going, going to keep going, but you're, you've, you've taken Holstein and Rashada in, in three weeks off the shelf. Yeah. All right. So, so if if it falls and, and, and the prognosticators and everybody you know making their predictions is true, then what's the next tier down? I think Ricky Collins, there's no way Purdue holds on him. Uh, what we've seen this spring and what I'm hearing from college coaches, and look, th that's what these spring games are. I was at Destrahan last week. Uh, you had, uh, I was at Catholic on Friday. Uh, a lot of these coaches, they're just sh sitting around, keeping an eye on players and showing their face, making their presence known. 
um, springy valve, but it's a lot of hobnobbing. You know, oh, who do yeah, you sure. see? Who do you like? Oh, look at that. Um, but Mike, he's the kind of quarterback that Den Brock likes, just like the guy he had at Cincinnati, Desmond Ritter. They want somebody that is going to be in the mix to give them RPO. And uh, I- I'm excited. And look, and, and I'm not acting like that's <laughs> like he's some big concession or you're falling up back on, oh, no, no, on no. a he's big guy. Potential. Okay, but there's, like I said, there's only so many of those guys in this class. You had DJ Lagway on campus. We got a big article that Preston did. We blew that out on Sunday. You can still find that on the front page, Tiger Bait. Number one, uh, arguably even one of the top two or three in the country for 2024. And I think LSU is in a great spot with him. I would not trade anybody's LSU spot. So between that, what usually happens with quarterbacks, transfer portal, coming in, going out, you know, I can see where Ricky Collins is a logical, he could be a guy, the guy. But you know what's lost in the shuffle? Garrett Nussmeyer's a redshirt freshman and Walker Howard's a true freshman. It is mighty nice for but, those Tiger but that's fans. Al- but that's also another reason why Ricky Collins might make more sense this year and why you're having – if it, it, the dust settles and you're trying to figure out why you lost on some of those guys, the national best guys, you know, you can point to that. But it's a good problem for LSU to have because normally they are void of more than one quarterback that can play a lick. Yep, yep. Matt Green, what's up, guys? Glad to have you with us, Matt. Fred Wright, uh, didn't Eli and Walker play at the same high school? No, they didn't. Uh, Eli was coming out of middle school in Lafayette and on his way to Lafayette and uh, STM. In fact, that summer at camp, he wore an STM helmet to to LSU camp. Wait, wasn't his brother playing? uh, Yeah, Caleb did. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, because Walker waited for Caleb to graduate. Right. Uh, Now Caleb's at at Louisiana Tech, and he was recruited by Joe Sloan. Mm Mm-hmm. So – um, but yeah, no, they did. They didn't play together. Um, certainly they know each other, worked out together. You know, Lafayette's a small town, medium sized town, but small. And so, yeah, they know each other, know the families, uh, Walker and Caleb were very close and supportive. Like I said, you know, Walker waited two years. So, um, but, uh, instead, um, they transferred to Zachary and, uh, he waited one year, and then after this season, well, he will have started three years at Zachary. So it was a good move. Um, Chance Babin, Eli is moving far away from Walker Howard. If he is scared of competition, Bama isn't a good place for him. And you made a great point last week, Mike, about the psychology of recruiting these kids, even when you feel like there's a strong lean uh, a lot of people think Derek Williams is going to be at Alabama. They had him on campus, recruited him like they should have. Same thing with Eli Holstein. What a couple weeks ago, in fact, Brian Pel- uh, Pauline went to the graduation for Grace, his daughter, came back, met with him. It's a good move because if it doesn't work out at Alabama in a couple of years, maybe he comes back the back door at LSU, like you said, but you transfer. That's why you, that's why I recruit them. So and, you, and, 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 and handle it the right way, especially and, with the great in-state players. And that, and that applies to Tack and Curtis. Yeah. You know, uh, it applies to all of them. You want them all to come on campus. You want them to all have a good time. Uh, you want them to all like the personality of your, of your staff. And if they don't end up this year, maybe they're going to end up there in two or three years. So, uh, Blaine Smith, what's up, Mike and Buddy? Holstein and Arch ain't coming to LSU. I really like Dante Moore. And um, that's the way a lot of uh, people feel. Um, the Golden Boot Pod. Good evening, Mike and Buddy. Always great to watch you guys. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Got to give a shout out to Poop. Air yeah, and I, I miss I miss them Sunday night, uh, and, I, and I didn't get to watch them last night because I was uh, watching the uh, the mid season Better Call Saul finale. Pooh Bear picked up a six figure NIL deal with gummies, some kind of gummy bears. Uh oh, uh-oh. yeah. So. Uh, kudos, to, kudos to Pooh Bear. The kind of gummies that aren't legal here? Uh, I I take the fifth. Um, Ryan Thibodeau, go Tigers. What's up, Mike and Buddy? Glad to have you with us. Um, Blaine Smith, yes, it is. Uh, he says June is going to be a busy and big month for recruiting. No doubt about it. It, it, it absolutely is going to be. Uh, look, after going out in the spring, um, I've said all along that I thought – Louisiana, and I said on last week's show, I think Louisiana is down. 
and um, talking to college coaches at multiple of these high school ca campuses, they all agree with me. They all say it's down. It's really down. And um, I think 24 looks better, um, but it's not quite to 22. So, but 23, that's why this staff, unfortunately, is going to have to make their bread with out-of-state ingredients. And the, the positive that we've reinforced here the last couple of weeks because of the transfer portal and now because of unlimited scholars to get you to 85, I hope this doesn't start a real ugly trend. Frank Wilson's the only guy that's getting away with only in-state guys. He's lucky. Well, but no, I'm saying I hope because now there's unlimited signees to get to 85, I hope we don't see a lot of these kids processed at, at particular schools. But look, uh, you talk about the state being down. You got unlimited scholars. You got the junior college and also the transfer portal. Mike, they're going to get these kids. And if it's Louisiana, one year, fine. But uh, they're going to be able to rebuild because, as we know, they're a year or two away from having the 85 that Brian Kelly wants. Uh, we do this show each and every week with the, uh, our, our partners, Pride Roofing. Let's hear from Mike Faraday and Alex Martinez. Hi, I'm Michael with Pride Roofing. I'm Alex. Were you affected by Hurricane Ida? Insurance claim, no, no problem. problem. Are you concerned about the shortage of building materials? We have what you need. We're licensed residential and commercial contractors. In Louisiana and Mississippi. We install shingles, metal, and commercial roofing. From Baton Rouge to Slidell or Homa up to the North Shore. We got you covered. Call Pride, 855 Pride 16. Pride Roofing, the official roofer of TigerBait.com. And there they are, Mike Faraday, Alex Martinez, and, and if always, they will always they're continue to run the promo. Give them a call. I, Alexandria got hit uh, last week um, uh, with hail. Give them a call, 855-PRIDE-16. If you had any damage, they will come to Alexandria. Uh, they've already been up there a couple of times, from what I understand. Um, and, but anywhere in the state of Louisiana, Pride Roofing is who you want to give them a call. 855 Pride 16, right there on Florida Boulevard in Albany, Louisiana. Um, talked to Mike earlier this evening. Uh, they're blowing and going, logging tons of miles. And um, with a free roof inspection, whether that's your residential or your commercial roof, um, tell them you heard about them on Tiger Bait, and they're going to pay for you to have premium Tiger Bait free for one year. So they're footing the bill, and you're out nothing other than just to have them come out, look at your roof, give you a quote. Uh, work with you and, and see what they can come up with. So um, they're absolutely fantastic. And um, there's no better roofing company, A-plus rated, uh, with the Better Business Bureau. Job well done is a job done with pride and by pride, of course, residential, metal, and commercial roofs. With the acquisition of Crown Metals, the, the game has totally changed, Mike. A lot more people doing business with pride roofing, including other roofers. And uh, as we say, they're going to crunch the numbers and get you the best deal. They're going to do it spick and span, get their early finish. You're going to be happy. Uh, we've had a lot of response, especially on your, your show, a lot of my people as well. And uh, w once again, when you say this word, what I like about them being sponsors on this show is that that's what Brian Kelly, that's what his job is, to bring back the pride of LSU. These people are doing it each and every day, and you know when you like people and you appreciate doing business with them, it's a reciprocal, because you tell everybody down the street, you're proud, man. You had a hurricane, I know, whatever. I didn't lose a shingle. Uh, do business with them, folks. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely. Um, let's get back to some more comments here. Um, uh, da, da, da. LSU baseball, what are they going to do in the tournament? Well, you know, it's interesting, folks. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, Ole Miss came in here, Mike, and swept LSU and had five home runs in one game. Just beat the tar out of them 11-1. to LSU goes over, puts a butt kicking on Vandy Thursday night, wins Saturday 8-3, to and then uh, they're down 6 to nothing in the Saturday finale, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Come back and uh, tie it up and then uh, put an 11 spot in the eighth inning and so what it has done is conjured up a lot of old baseball memories the good times the good karma when lsu fans after what skip burtman showed them and oh by the way you know what's been playing in all these rain delays hold the rope 
Almost brought the rope as a props. By the way, you see our props tonight. Chicks dig the long ball. What year was that shirt produced? Uh, I, this, I don't know, but this, I'm going to get one of these for Nurse Court. So, Nurse Court, at some point, email. You can't buy those anymore. I, I got a guy that can get it in Nurse Court a shot. But, uh, shirt, chicks dig the long ball. Is that from the long ball? Is that from the uh, Gorilla Ball era? Oh, yeah, that goes way back, bud. But, look. So the walk-off home run with Warren Morris and the whole rope have been playing over and over again because they've been killing time with some of these rain delays, like four hours today. Yeah, because you think about it, how much LSU, ba- I mean, how much SEC baseball content is there for them to run? Well, but it's been crazy. You keep seeing all these okay, stories. Well, you, you, the the uh, Mississippi State, uh, uh, yeah. Palmero. And, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I, I've seen all of that. Yeah, how many? but how many, ba- uh, uh, what's the old uh, – Auburn baseball coach. How Baird, yeah. Yeah, there's only so many of those documentaries well, that they well, have in the I, can. No doubt. But what I was saying to you is this. It's almost like it's putting the LSU baseball fan back in that that mindset of like, you know what? When they hit the ball like they did this last weekend, they can literally beat anybody in the SEC. Now, we know Tony Vitello and Tennessee have has run off and had an incredible year. So one of the best ever. But um, – uh, how far will – the big question is, are they going to host? And we know RPI is at 23. LSU, 106 home runs and, and counting. Uh, they've been hit by pitches 112 times, and they've made uh, uh, quite a few errors, although they are fielding a little bit better. But, Mike, if they hit the ball the way they, they have been, uh, they could win a couple games. Uh, or, you know, at this how point, it doesn't that. really matter. We got the uh, release this afternoon about the Golden Spikes Award and, and Cruz and Barry are, are both semifinalists. Finalists. Um, but who, Barry who, got shafted. Who would win it over Cruz? Barry got shafted. He should have been first team All SEC. I don't care if you put him in as the DH. He was actually the the, the second team third baseman. But uh, Cruz, man, uh, got an Auburn first baseman who's real good, and some others got a pitcher from Tennessee. But look, he is uh, he is something, man. And, and the great thing about Dylan Cruz is he's just as good off of the, the field as he is on it. He's very much into the community service part of it. Makes you feel proud to see uh, these kind of young men. And, and Jay Johnson, let's give this, lot of, this guy and his staff a lot of credit. Look, when you're a baseball coach, man, and you're extending games and you're doing it your way and you're losing and these things are hot and long and you get swept at home, man, that's tough. But uh, you pick yourself off uh, uh, the ground and and you go back at it, and it is a fun team to watch right now. The problem is you don't know if that will carry over. But if it carries over with the hitting, they're going to be tough. Blind Eye Sports, I believe Ricky Collins would be an awesome fit at LSU. Uh, Blaine Smith, recruit a good three-star with upside at quarterback. You know, here's the thing about um, Ricky, and it was told to me two years ago when I first went over there and and laid eyes on him, and, of course – Woodlawn High School is around the corner from my house, so I could practically walk there. And um, Ricky, the baseball coach tells me he's the best player on his baseball team. The basketball coach tells me he's the best player on the basketball team. And it's been that way since he was a ninth grader. So imagine how good he can be when he's only playing one sport. So, And he's been that way at Woodlawn, a 5A school uh, with, that has its share of athletes, and he's been that guy since the ninth grade. Well, I remember 360 you, Duncan. They they sent yeah. me they they sent me a bunch of clips that I put up on the website of him 360 Duncan and alley ooping and everything in the ninth grade. Crazy. Well, he's uh, he's got a lot of potential, and and once again, uh, I, I still am in a little shock. Uh, number one, Mike, that's cool that the uh, the new guys are already on campus. Brian Kelly tweeted that out. Uh, look, I think you're going to have five or six starters on guys that just showed up, including your place kicker, and your punter. And so uh, we'll constantly follow that. Uh, I got to be honest with you, man. It, it's got nothing to do with the Catholic Kai bloodline, but I, I just think Emory Jones is going to come in yep. and assert himself and be in the two deep. I'm not saying he's going to start because Miles Frazier and, and Tremont Sharts are pretty good experienced players uh, and, and have been there before. But – uh, to have Will Campbell and Emory Jones, and then you get back Marlon Martinez and seeing what uh, Dellinger can do this year. I, I really think if that old line has a little depth, uh, this six and a half, I might get some of this Scarborough money or this Pride Roofing money and, and go put a C note down on LSU over six and a half. I mean, look, Tiger fans, you're going to get sand thrown up on your beach towel all summer. 
So don't freak out. Just take it and say, come on. Yeah, nobody's taking it. Uh, I mean, seriously, we're either stupid or naive or whatever, but we saw a lot of the work this year. If they can stay healthy. That's going to move. If they can stay healthy, though, that's not a six and a seven win team. That's a potential eight, nine win team, and who knows. Uh, of course, we don't know because the quarterback. Uh, I just know I'm going to land on eight and four. Yeah, that's um, what you've been saying. Uh, Kenny Fudge, good evening, Mike and, and Buddy. Glad to have you with us. Um, Let's see, we got. Where's uh, the shark? Shark get shark get some money for over six and a half. He's yeah, Nurse Court says she's betting the over. Um, and, Nurse Court, I got a hundred over on the over for her, and she's got a t-shirt coming. And uh, yes, uh, special teams talk. Um, by the way, um, you mentioned Kavlika. I was there on Friday, and I didn't know that Shelton Sampson had a hamstring issue and wasn't going to be participating. But I did see Coach Hankton out there. Mm-hmm. And um, I think there's a couple – Calvary Kai is going to be really good. Um, they're going to be really good again. Um, but uh, Shelton Sampson, even though he wasn't participating, he, he, he looks damn good. But um, uh, I think Coach Hankton is going to be another special recruiter for this staff. I, you know what I was just getting ready to add? I mean, you, you've talked to a bunch of them already. I think in due time, and it's going to take everybody a little time because, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. But I think in due time, people are going to say, wow, Brian Kelly did a hell of a job assembling that first staff in light of the time frame. Mike, you're asking people to disrupt your life, your kids' lives, your Christmas. I mean, boom, you're getting a job into November, and you got a signing period two weeks. I mean, you realize how quickly – and, and I know we were all impatient, but uh, I think this staff and Coach Hankton and Sloan and Frank with the Louisiana Ties, and then you got the Canes and, and the others, and then your two DB coaches. I mean, look what they're Steeples, doing recruiting. Cooks. I, I think that we're going to find out that uh, this was one hell of a Brad staff. Brad Davis. Uh, it, it, it looks like the, the potential to be a really look, good Look, I, I, I used to get in trouble back in the day, and, and Les Miles would have his minions get mad at me, and I got to the point where I didn't give a crap. And, but he had some dead weight, and I would name him. I, who's the dead weight on this staff and from the recruiting deal? Because if you're going to say Dembrock, Dembrock isn't. No. Dembrock likes to recruit. Mm-hmm. Let's see what tight ends he ends up pulling. So, and Joe Sloan's going coast to coast. Well, how about Matt House and what he's been doing with linebackers? He's the reason he went over to Manny. I'm, I'm, I'm finding about t- class of 25 and 26 quarterbacks that have had long, uh, detailed conversations with Joe Sloan. I mean, that dude is working his tail off. So, um, I, I'm, I'm blown away by the staff. And what we're saying here on this Tuesday night, well, LSU I- football is going to be special again. But the, the question is, at what point, at what year, does the light go on and everything works perfectly? Now, look, we all saw the apex. I mean, let's be honest, folks. We're never going to see uh, an exciting offensive team of that magnitude, at least not in my lifetime, but the, the average 400 passing and, and, and 48 points a game and the entertainment value and all the things that it brought to the table because it's so exciting. LSU won that, that series 15-0, uh, to but three games they had to kick onside to protect the lead at the end of the game, that Texas game. I mean, all those games, I just don't know if we'll ever see another season. And Brian Kelly's over here at Baton Rouge in LSU because he wants to see if he can win one. And this is a big challenge for him. But, man, I like the pieces they put early on in the puzzle. Ryan Thibodeau asked, does Nick Brissett help in Baton Rouge? I think he does, although I still am unclear as to what his job title partly reads the way um, Coach Baglio's did. I'm assuming it's going to be similar duties, maybe a little bit different. Um, But whatever it is, if it's Nick Brissett dealing with high school coaches and dealing with the public, um, he's one of the most likable uh, athletes ever to come through LSU. He knows the area. He, he's uh, not far removed from being a player. I mean, heck, it wasn't. It was just a year or two ago. He was still, you know, working in the off season, trying to get an opportunity 
uh, to play uh, pro, pro ball. And uh, of course, coached at U High, and um, he knows everybody. And so I I I think he's going to be fantastic in whatever he does. And and um, you know he's got that million dollar smile. So uh, I I think he's he's going to be uh, absolutely fantastic. And um, it's that time of the show. And and I wanted to talk about it a little early tonight. Tony Freeman, my dear friend with Assurance Financial. If you're thinking of buying a home or refinancing your current mortgage, you haven't found a lender you can trust. Well, let me tell you about Tony Freeman with Assurance Financial here in Baton Rouge. She's a dear friend of mine, someone who many of my friends have used for their mortgage needs repeatedly. Her knowledge and over 25 years of experience in the mortgage industry is unsurpassed. She offers a wide range of knowledge of home loan products, whether you're a first-time home buyer, ready to buy a new home, or you just want to explore your refinance options, Tony can guide you through your next mortgage experience. You can feel confident you're making the best financial decision with Tony as your guide. And not only is Tony a huge LSU fan, but Assurance Financial is a proud partner of LSU Athletics. Call Tony today, 225-239-7150. Again, that's 225-239-7150. And tell her you heard about her right here on TigerBait.com. Please, please tell her you heard about her on TigerBait.com. NMLS number 104765, equal housing opportunity, 70876. And look, I know interest rates are going up. Uh, I've got multiple houses on my street that are for sale. People are moving. People are having to move. LSU coaches are still looking for houses, is my understanding. Uh, the market, even though the inflation has made the prices of houses, you know, whether it's jobs or whatever, people still have to buy houses. And so, yeah, you might – uh, have to pay more for a house, but you're also getting more for your house. But she's going to find you the best rate. She's going to uh, go through the whole process with you. And I'm telling you, she is the absolute best in Baton Rouge. And if you're anywhere in Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, surrounding areas, she's licensed in multiple states. That's why you need to give Tony a call. Super lady, of course, a million dollar smile, uh, definitely dots the I's and crosses the T's. And Mike, uh, uh, when I am in the car in and out here and Chris Blair and Bill Franquez and all the other uh, analysts that they have on the baseball coverage, I hear their ads. And so uh, they are proud sponsors of LSU baseball. And uh, she is uh, quite the young, or I say uh, the lady, she just makes everybody feel so comfortable. And I really believe Tony lives uh, uh, life to the fullest. And, and you'll understand that when you uh, do business with her. Treated her to lunch uh, last week, went to BRQ, and she had a uh, roast beef French dip-looking sandwich, and I'm like, I ordered the wrong thing. I mean, she <laughs> she, know, she knew what to order, but uh, she she's absolutely out of this world. Y'all give her a call. Um, let's see what else we got here. Nurse Quartz in the chat. Uh, here we go. Esteban, hadn't seen him in a while. Brian Kelly is going to win. The talent is there. He and the staff know the game and make adjustments. 2024. LSU makes the playoffs. You know, it's, uh, it, it's fun to be able to have the access. Now, look, um, as we know, uh, Coach Kelly is starting to make the rounds uh, on, on some of the TV people and, and some of the other uh, media outlets, and so I'm sure he'll be asked all the questions. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they, they have camp next week uh, with the high schoolers, and then, uh, as we know, he's, uh, he's up on the first day. Uh, July 18th on a Monday at the SEC Media Days. Look, it's simple. Greg Sankey's going to send out a memo. No, coach, talk about the Saban Jimbo feud, okay? It's against the bylaws. Well, somebody's going to walk across that line, whether it's the Pirate from Mississippi State or Lane Kiffin or somebody. I, I can tell you right now. Who you think it'll be? I can tell you right now they've all been told to stay quiet. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know for a fact they have. But look, Brian Kelly uh, is is going to go in there, and uh, everybody knows uh, he's he's got a plan, and he's very meticulous and uh, calculated. And and speaking of Jacques, he just did a little thing with B.J. Ogilary, and he he said something that resonated with me. He said that this is the best chemistry we've all had. They're all in now. You still got to stay healthy. You still got to write. Uh, pick the right quarterback, you still got to call the right plays, and you still, still got to compete in the toughest division in all of college football. But I like LSU's chances. Right now your MVP of the program needs to be Jake Flynn. And he's done a hell of a job. So he's far. the guy right now. And so 
Well, I'm saying he, he, they look good after only having him for two or three months before spring football. But right now, this summer, this is his prime time. The next, the next couple of months, uh, he's, he's really got to get them ready. Um, and so we, we saw what Will Campbell looked like. He tells us he's gained 17 pounds. Now Emory Jones is on campus. What does he do with him? Because hmm. uh, Emory Jones had been doing it on his own. Yeah. Because once they sign, they're allowed to share workouts. Uh, the, the strength coach at LSU is allowed to talk to them. What did you do today? What did you eat? Uh, so that even though they, if, if they weren't midterm grads, they still get to train them, you know, via Zoom or, or just touch base with them, know what, that they're doing the right lifts and, and doing their program. So uh, I think some of those kids have already made gains just by doing what Flint wants them to do on their own. So uh, C-Man C-U-C, do you think Scott Woodward tells Beth Torina that he needs to see her improve substantially next year. Where is Brian Madeir? I can't believe uh, I think he had a few in there earlier, but uh, oh, okay, uh, okay. he also uh, got political. Uh, oh, okay, well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> Brian. We, uh, the, here's the thing on Beth Torina. Obviously, you saw him. How many times are we going to bring up Jacques Doucet tonight? He caught her getting off the bus at the airport, and uh, she found, was saying it was unacceptable, their season. But when you go look at her recruiting class – She's got three hot shot pitchers. She's got that great catcher from Crowley, uh, from Notre Dame of Crowley, uh, what do they call it? Notre Dame of Acadia Parish. Um, and so she's got, she can point to that. She's got a very good recruiting class. But yeah, she's got to turn the corner because it's been a while. Um, you know, but here's the other part. I can tell you the softball fans who are, are squirming and, and not happy right now, you better not play the youth card on them next year either. So she's, she's a little bit in a spot. Yeah. I think next year is very important to turn the corner and get back. Uh, obviously, uh, when you're the two seed to lose, lose to the three and four. First time ever, uh, Mike, LSU went 0-2 uh, in the postseason uh, on their way trying to get to OKC. I think she's made it over there four times for sure. But uh, got to get some dominant pitching. And I've always asked this question, why has she never brought in a flame-throwing lefty? And uh, I see all this. Of course, Oklahoma's killing uh, a, a ton of uh, a ton of uh, home runs. And so, uh, look, chicks dig the long ball. This is for softball and Well, and, and, uh, and that's baseball. that's always been one of the knocks that people say she's too loyal and, and she needs to do something with her hitting coach. I've heard that, and and I'm just repeating what the the, the big softball people tell me. Um, you know, there, there's something to be said for being loyal to staff. That's it's a good trait. Um, but we've also seen that get coaches in trouble. We, we, we've seen it repeatedly. Sorry, I had a couple of messages. Hello, hello. You know, people worrying about me. This is out of character of all us. We are doing a Tuesday night show. And, of course, I wanted to take a little time off and said, no, Lazy, come on over here. Um, a couple of other tidbits to broach in this uh, show tonight. The SEC meeting in Destin next week. And, of course, they're going to divvy up all that money that they bring in. And I think we will get clearer uh, indications if Texas and OU are going to make it here earlier or if it's going to be 2025, which, as we know, I, I don't know how you stay in a mansion house and have your divor divorced wife for four years, but that's what they're trying to do because of the buyout and all of the, the sanctions to come over. But lo and behold, there is talk that the SEC is, is talking about having this, uh, I, I don't know if you heard this, about this playoff within themselves, the FCC playoff. I heard that, and, it, and your, your first response is to say, what? That's ridiculous. But then you really think about it, and that, that could actually absolutely work. Because what's missing, when you add Texas and Oklahoma to the league, and you say, okay, if, if nobody wants to play you after that, who are you really missing out on that could be a – that you could say – could challenge the SEC number one guy at the end of it all. Ohio State maybe, Clemson maybe, Clemson's falling but back. Things are changing. Man. USC. USC's going to be a player now. Yeah. Right. Well, no. Here's the thing. I don't think. I, I think this is just posturing by the SEC. Trust me, Greg Sankey. And he needs the posture. Greg Sankey is is becoming the the, the most powerful man in college football. He is. Other than the agent that uh, for Saban and everybody else, Jimmy Sexton. He's powerful, too, as we know. 
But I think this is just posturing for the SEC to get more of their way. I, I just, when you said that, I realized that those two are both Sexton's clients. Yeah, absolutely. Jimbo and Saban. Sure. What was that like? And they're both from West Virginia. Man, so, Hatfields and McCoys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, or is that in West Virginia and Kentucky? Uh, well, no. All the I can Hatfields tell you is that they are mad, and that's going to be squelched. But, but it's a changing landscape, Mike. We're going to cautiously – Watch what they're going to do with policing NIL. You got to police it. Even Brian Kelly, everybody, Nick, everybody. It's it's not sustainable what's going on right now. You just you got to have a sound cap. You have to have some policing. And the other good thing for the Tiger fan, though, as we keep reiterating, and I don't think you and I have a pulse on it right now, but how many scholars are they going to have for the next two years? And uh, you, you talk about tight end or a weak spot here, you're going to be able to, to patch that Band-Aid a lot quicker now that you have the unlimited scholarships on a yearly basis. Detrick Clark, is Harold Perkins on campus yet? Uh, yes, he is. And um, um, I'll say this, uh, that was uh, – watch Jacques Doucet's interview with BK because he had uh, – there's some great stuff about Harold Perkins that he's got on that. I'm, I'm teasing that for Jacques. Okay. Uh, look, uh, I mean, we talked about the cornerback from Lafayette. Uh, uh, of course, two of them, Welsh as well, uh, the kid that played with Trev Falk. We talk about the opponent. We talk about the Nathan uh, Dybert, the place kicker. Talk about Emory Jones. Don't forget seven banks coming from Ohio State. So just had an influx of another 12 or 13. By the way, I meant to ask you this uh, uh, during the week. I never got back. What are you hearing on these final two for this, uh, this year where they had 32? You heard anything? Um, no, nothing. So, I, I just like the fact it, that... It, uh, it, it's quiet, man. It, you, no, but I like the fact that LSU... And here's the other thing that I think Tiger fans are going to seriously enjoy. When you ask the question to people who could maybe answer that question, you, you, you get punch drunk how quickly they can maneuver out of it and change the subject. Well, look, if they had two players that they had... Uh, had wanted and, and, and come over, they would have got him. But here's the thing, Mike. When's the last time LSU has had an offensive line that was big, mean, strong, with depth, where you could line up and just play smash mouth? I think in two years, the LSU fans are going to take great pride in the physicality at the line of scrimmage. I still think it's going to take another year or two because of attrition and all the other things and what you got leaving. But uh, you're going to see LSU big and nasty. And, and it's already pretty darn good at the defensive line. But I still think, you know, tight end and center are the big questions that I have as far as solidifying those two spots with depth going into the fall camp. Ryan Thibodeau, can you see the SEC and other Power Five conferences se separate from the NCAA in football? That, to me, is more feasible than the SEC having their own playoff. Because if, if, you, if you did that – uh, you know, you're, you're talking about a, a big hot mess. But, but look, the but, power but, five, but, the but, 60 but, but, or so But that is, that is Sankey flexing. Yeah, he's flexing his muscle. Because and, and, and every one of these SEC commissioners in the history of the last 30 years, whether it's Roy Kramer, Slive, and now Sankey, they all have their – they all have their, their – their, where they plant their flag. Their legacy. Yeah. And Sankey is about – However this plays out, he's got a real opportunity. You know, with, with Roy Kramer, it was the SEC championship game. Uh, what would you say Slives was? Uh, just the TV contracts? Well, that and getting the, 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 the teams off probation. Remember, he came in, there was a lot yeah. of teams on probation. But, but also big high-dollar TV Absolutely. contracts. Absolutely. And now Sankey has an opportunity to even take it into a whole other – Stratosphere, and he really got pissed off at the ACC. I mean, or or, or, or some people say him getting Texas and Oklahoma is enough. But but he got mad and took it personally when ACC blocked them moving to twelve with the playoff. So uh, it, it's crazy uh, landscape with college football, and and you know we get this question every day: Are you still going to love it, man? As long as you uh, filming out there and you you following recruits, we're going to love it now. Uh, is it nice to have a guy come in and play one year at a place and get $3 million? No, that's a bad precedent, but it's happening, and, and everybody's got to adjust. I like the fact that Brian Kelly is teaching these guys that they have got to be accountable for everything that they do, 
and this is going to be beneficial moving forward for the program, but also for those young players. Okay, I'm getting a question that I had no idea, unless it's the same thing that was from weeks ago. Troy Davis, how is John, Jim Hawthorne doing? Uh, that is funny. I, I was going to call or text Jimmy. Uh, look, this was a couple of weeks ago. I think Lynn Rollins was doing a game with Ronnie. Jim was having a medical procedure. And, uh, and, and Lynn I remember, kind of, I remember they're asking for prayers, but it didn't. And, and Lynn said, ask for prayers, but his daughter went on uh, Facebook and other places and posted that it was just a medical procedure. But I am going to be texting Jimmy, uh, to make sure that he is all right. I haven't heard tomorrow. anything, but I know, I, I think he's fine. Okay. Let's see what else we got guys. Let me, so I'm scrolling down. Give me a minute. Um, Point spread for LSU, Florida State. I don't know if this is legit or not. Or, or not. Did you see this? Was it three or three and a half? It went, it, went, it went down to two and a half. I don't know why I would move right now. But you can call me home or all day. But I'll take some minus two and a half, and I'll take some over six and a half uh, with, with LSU this, this season. I, I just think that, uh, of course, I've been wrong. Now, look, one year Curly was a coach, and I said, yeah, I think they're going to go seven and, and four. Uh, of course, they played 11 at those times, and that might have been the year he went two and a, two and nine. So, uh, and don't ask me to prognosticate. But that I, was a I, 58 to three season. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. I was there. Yeah. In the heat, day game. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thanks for everybody for participating. Go to Tiger Bait. Subscribe, please. We want to have you on board with loads of recruiting uh, coming your way. Like I said, a big quarterback story tomorrow. We got three or four recruiting new recruiting updates on the on the page right now. Brian Lazar's uh, baseball analysis rolls in the morning, and uh, that and much more. Uh, so we've got it all for you on on TigerBait.com. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight, and uh, I'll be back next week. Uh, I don't know. Were you back next week? I don't know. I might go vacation next week. It just depends on baseball. By the way, it does look like LSU is going to play Thursday morning. Of course, that's the tentative right now. Because of all the rain, Alabama did upset Georgia earlier, and it is at a snail's pace. So you're going to have to have some patience with uh, these late games. And uh, as uh, we we noted, a lot going on with uh, with LSU and, and Brian Kelly. I think this is going to be a hell of a buildup and a heck of a summer. So we hope that uh, uh, you know I'll flip it a coin whether I'll be here or not. But one of these days, I got to take I'm, a little I'm time I'm telling off. you right now, the news in the coming weeks is going to be fast and furious. Yeah. Uh, there's a little two-week uh, window in July, but even in July you have SEC media days. But that's usually when they take. But but other than that, it's going to be nonstop. I think because of, of commitments, quarterbacks are going to start to drop. You got camp next month, all throughout the month of June. New offers, commitments, uh, new guys that are getting offers that maybe that were flying on the radar get seen at camp, perform well, offers extended. So it, it, we've got a lot coming your way on TigerBait.com. And, uh, we'll, we, of course, we'll be here with the show each and every week. So, all right, guys, good night. Thanks for participating. And uh, please share, like, the whole works, subscription bell, subscription button, notification bell. And uh, good night, everybody.